Okay, welcome to this week's Inside Oriel with Bert Regal. Um, I'm joined by Greg Saga this week. Greg, nice to have you. Thanks, Gav. Last time you were here, I think you were on the sofa. It was, yeah. <laughs> it, was bit, it was a bit more, yeah, a bit more relaxed. Um, we're obviously building up to Friday's game with Shelburne at Talca Park, but I suppose we have to go back. It's been a it's been a good response to the sort of bad month that we had, you know, picking up the, the win against Cork and then obviously the, the loud derby on Friday night against the Drugs. Yeah, we needed it. Um Obviously, it was a kind of diff- disappointing patch losing to the teams higher in the table, and obviously the the result down in Galway. So we wanted to respond, and we have. But you know, I, I suppose we're not getting too high about it because you know it's the aftermath of what was before. Like mm. you're still, it's still fresh in the memory that those 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 patch of results. So um, we're still kind of determined to to put that right. You know. Um, and it, we've made the first step. So yeah, I come back and talk to you about that sort of run. But you, from your own personal point of view, you played centre back the last last three games. Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, yeah, it's different, different, mm. different look and feel to the game. Um, obviously, the way the, the game went in Galway it was it was a bit mad, and I came on in midfield and just I think the gaffer wanted to shake things up because of the way the game had gone, and I've ended up in centre half and and done well and. It's an experiment that I think is is going going quite well at the moment. So um, yeah, look, it's it's enjoyable. You're kind of gone are the days where the midfielders just drop in and take it off the centre halves, and the the rest is history. You yeah. just defend. You're you know you have full license to go and kind of dictate the game and really progress the the play for the team. So taking that on board and and then it's just kind of learning the the intricacies of of that job. So no, it's good. It's good. Um, you asked me to I prefer to play midfield, I'd say yes every day of the week. But um, look, I relish a new challenge, so it's uh, it's it's one I take on board. Yeah, is that your first time playing now? You've obviously played a bit of right back. Yeah, or, I know. Or, if have you played every I've had the odd fill in job in yeah. in centre half, but never kind of a consistent. Uh, even three games on the spin is more than I've ever um, experienced there. So, um, so no, it's good. As you say, it's it's compared to. to Five even ten years ago, if you you're asked to go back centre half, there's not like, the the positions, but every position in the pitch is, is a lot more fluid and a lot more flexible. Yeah, you have to be able to use yeah. the ball, um, and you know, obviously, having having played in midfield now for years, I'm, I'm more than comfortable on the ball and um, receiving it and starting the game up from there. So um, even goalkeepers, obviously, these days have to be really good on the ball. Mm. So comes without question, really. So, um, but on top of that, you know, you have to be defensively sound. So. Hopefully I can, you know, live up to that sort of expectation there. Yeah. We go back to the, go back to the sort of the month. We should have brought the couch out for this <laughs> to, <laughs> to talk about it. Well, it was exactly, it's funny, it was exactly a month between sort of, you know, the win against, Ro- or win against sorry, lo- losing against Rovers and Tala and then beating Cork. So it was a month of sort of bad results. Mm. Was that your lowest spell as a, as a player here at, at the club? It's up there. I know 21 was pretty... Power at times, but yeah, no, it's, it's up there. I think obviously the the real low point was the loss mm. against Galway, um, especially in the context of the season, you know, and what there is to play for, and European football and all that, and you know the work we'd done already in the cup to mm. to knock out Rovers. You know, you you not that you, you can't. We I don't think we went down there underestimating Galway, but we just didn't turn up on the night. Um, in a, in a defensive, you know, physical, up and at it sense, and, and you know they've they've done one on us. But we look, you kind of look back on the four games, and that was our one real poor performance. Mm. The other games, it's hard to say you performed well and you conceded three and four and whatever. Um, you know, from that aspect, we really needed to clean up, and we, we still need to you know continuously work on that aspect. But in terms of how we played. With with the ball, creating opportunities, dominating games, for the most part was good. So it was one of those. But obviously, it was a very very low point. You know, results is is what the business is about, and and we weren't picking them up. And you know, when you go three four games losing, you're just dying to get a win on the board. And thankfully, you now we've done that this week, and we can reset and you know, uh, just get that confidence back in amongst ourselves. I we spoke twenty 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 one. Obviously, it was say tired time. There was some low moments. The five five nil or five one in bowls you scored up in mm-hmm. the element that day. But is it was it different after goal because the fans are on the ground in twenty twenty one? There was nobody at the games. Everybody was watching it on yeah, yeah. the stream. 
was it a different feeling this time because you, you know the fans are there yeah. I'm sure there was probably a bit of trepidation coming out at Richmond Park the week after thinking you know what, what sort of what sort of response yeah. did you get from the fans well look I think the fans can sense it like you know they <laughs> sensed we didn't really turn up against mm. Galway you know and you could sense the frustration afterwards and I know the gaffer wanted us to feel how they were frustrated after the game because <coughs> you know it wasn't it wasn't good enough mm. but like we went <coughs> out the next game and lost to Pats but we played well mm. and you could sense from the fans <coughs> that they appreciated the effort we gave and how we approached the game you know after the game yeah. you didn't sense frustration like you did after the Galway game and <coughs> I think that was like that was understandable and I think they can recognise when there's a fair and honest performance put in you know um, but they deserve results as well and you know we, we need to have that bit more more steel about us at times um, and I think We've showed that now the last last couple of games. So, I think there was a fear that coming home from Galway that night there was a fear that that might be the season. It might just peter out. You know, there'd be nobody at the court game on Monday. The draw of the game would just come and come and go. But I think the atmosphere on Friday night there was it was a big week for the club with the GNR anniversary and mm. a lot of stuff happening. It sort of gave everybody just that little reminder that you know there's there's still there's still life there's still life in the season. No, hundred percent, hundred percent, and I think. That the Dundalk fans are, are good for that. Obviously, Monday night is a Monday night. It's a little bit different. Yeah. But you really felt it against Drada, like, And even in 2021, when the fans weren't at the game, still <laughs> there was the support from around the town knocking around. Um, when times are bad, mm. you know, um, there's, there's a loyal following there and, and they really get behind us. So we really felt that this week. Um, and, <laughs> you know, even, you know, we know they care after the Galway game, you know, mm. like... To sense that really shows that shows the lads shows everybody what it means. You know what I mean? That you can't just turn up and and not perform. Like there's there's people out there that care, um, as as do we. But it really emphasizes it for us. You know, I think for for some of the new lads as well. Say new, like we're, we're nearly at the end of the season. But Oriel, to me, Oriel is all about the autumn and winter when mm. it's dark and it's you know what I mean. It's a bit gloomy outside because yeah, yeah. it's one of those grounds that really. The atmosphere is just completely different than when yeah. it is in the summer and the spring. I think for some of them who are here in the first year, they're probably mm. looking at that and Friday and think, "Whoa, yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? This yeah. is this is what it's." it's I don't all know, but about. they felt it across the season as yeah. well. But obviously, some like Sam has come in in the summer. Um, you know, he's playing his first senior football mm. in front of fans, and there's other players like that who've been here since the start of the season, but it's their first year in senior football. Mm. Like, so I remember when I first well moved from UCD, let's say, even to Derry, like it really hit me you yeah. know what I mean um, just the, the real following that these clubs have and, and <laughs> how much it means and how like how loud it is and you know there's so much there um, and it's really a driving force really for a club um, yeah. that that fan base like yeah hopefully we've you say we've we've turned the corner one of the other things is we, we like most clubs in the league we haven't been haven't gone on a real consistent long run. I think we've only won four games in a row once. We've only run mm. three games in a row once. Mm. Like we need to address that to, mm. to to make sure we're in the in the shake up come come November. Yeah, no, it's true. Yeah, um, and I suppose probably looking at that, it's probably our waveform that stifles us really. Um, which is again is similar with something we need to address. Why you know we're not showing that just resilience when we go be away from home and you know no better time to address that than this week yeah um because you know talk about be a tough place to go but you know it is it's it's difficult league for that you know teams are teams are tough you know to go and just win 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 back to back um is no mean feat but that's that's what you need to do to be successful i think every every club in the league is probably sitting having the same sort of conversation mm. it's it's just been a I don't, I've never seen a season like it where everybody's just dropping points and nobody's sort of consistent. Yeah, it's hard to put your finger on it. Teams are well set up, you know. <coughs> uh, the level of management, for example, in the league is, mm. is brilliant and um, I think the standard of the league is going up. Um, so, you know, it's difficult to just find that rhythm yeah. sometimes. We've four games left and I think we've spoken about the last month. I think there's literally, we're at this point now we can forget about everything that's gone before nearly because as it stands we've four games left what are we seven points off Pats and third three behind Bowes one behind Shells we obviously have Shells and Bowes still to play mm. we've got to talk on Friday night 
with the way the fixtures are as well with each of the other clubs, this this looks like it's going to go down to the wire, doesn't it? To the, the final yeah, you'd game. imagine so. Yeah, um, obviously those those two games are you know pivotal, um, but but every game is huge and just for the same reason that we're talking about there, anyone can beat anyone. So on any given night, <coughs> you know, you pick up three points and you might leapfrog someone. So, you know, if this was the last game of the season coming up on Friday, <laughs> there's as much chance we could finish fourth or yeah. whatever, you know, um, as any other stage. So, you know, we just have to, you know, remain focused, remain confident, keep believing that the opportunity is there for us. We know that, the teams above us won't pick up maximum points. We pick up maximum points. You know, there's a good chance. So, yeah. we just need to keep believing. It's a tough place, isn't it? Tough place to go, in fairness. Talca is, yeah. He's, it, they've, they've, they've been, since Duff's come in, they've, they've been a big sort of addition to the league. And Defensively, they've at least conceded the least goals this season, but they've a bit more about them going forward than probably they, they had this time last year. Yeah, to be fair, they're probably a bit of a transformation mm. over the last few years. Um and you've seen that in terms of the following sport they have. And mm. Tolka is, you know, good atmosphere now to go to um, versus when they were in, in the first division. Mm. So, you know, there's been a big, big change in that regard. And, and the football has kind of complemented it. So they're, they're, they're playing well without a doubt. They're getting a lot of plaudits. Um, and it'll be a tough game. Yeah, we'd like we look forward to it in the sense, you know, we've, we've won our last two. We want to go make it three for three. It's a huge game in the context of the league. Um so, you know, what a game to go and be involved in, yeah. Make it three from three, then there's obviously a break with the internationals. Get, hopefully get a couple of the injured lads back and make a real push for it then over the, the, the last couple of games. Yeah, it'll come in quick now, the end of the season. Uh, it's hard to even imagine it's four games now. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it's flown, isn't it's it? just gone like that now. It's just like you're on the last straight now. Um, so, yeah, it's just, it's just all gunning now just for, for the end of the season. A little breather after... After this weekend, and then just go at it for the last three games. Yeah, we haven't played up there. We haven't been up there too many times over the, the past number of years. Do you remember our last win at Talca Park? I'm bad for calling. February twenty twenty. I think it was your second was game. It? Was right. your second game for the Dock? Mm. Do you Wasn't remember? Goals from Andy Boyle right. and Pat Hoban. Right up there. I think it was the week before. Um, we went to Tala and played Rovers, yeah. and then. Finn Hobson and the yeah, world, the yeah, world, yeah, shut down. The world shut down. Yeah. yeah, that was our last. In fairness, we haven't played too many. I think we've only played up there twice yeah, since. But yeah, Jesus Christ. Yeah, it'd be nice to. That's mad. Yeah, nice to go up there and. I think they already this year, no? Did we? We drew. Yeah, we yeah, drew. we drew up there. True. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, we we'll up there now and take three points. Fingers crossed. Your best goal in the Dundalk chairs you was against. Chelsea. Chelsea. Take one. Take one. Friday yeah. night. Yeah. That was that was a winner, so yeah, it'd be yeah. nice to do that again. <laughs> yeah. Rampage and run from, from the, the heart yeah, of the back yeah. four. And a nice finish, Greg. Yeah. Take after Louis Allensley. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That'd be nice. Greg, thanks for joining me. Um, best of luck Friday night. And as you say, hopefully we can hopefully we can make a three out of three. Thanks very much, Gav. Cheers. Cheers, thank you.